You know, this video doesn't really have the same budget as the show that I'm going to be talking about. Hey everybody, welcome back to another exciting episode of A Week in Geekdom. Today I am reviewing Millionaire Detective Balance Unlimited. I made a first impressions video back in early 2020, but finally here we are with the actual series review. Regardless, we're here to talk about Daisuke Kambe and how much of a good time I had watching this series. Seriously, this was a blast. In Millionaire Detective Balance Unlimited, we follow Daisuke Kambe, a detective with an extreme amount of wealth, and he is assigned to the Modern Crime Prevention Headquarters, a place for officers who have caused problems for the Metropolitan Police Department in Japan. And over there, Daisuke is assigned to our second main protagonist, Haru Koto. Haru is disgusted and kind of repulsed by uh, Daisuke's style of, you know, just flaunting his money around and trying to solve everything with all the high-tech gadgets and his unlimited budget. As the story quickly unfolds, there are several mysteries regarding the backstory of Daisuke Kambe and how the two main characters have to set aside their different personalities to work together to solve these crimes that could spell disaster for every citizen in Japan and maybe the world. This is a series that is both detective in nature but mystery and a little bit of comedy thrown in for good measure. It is produced by Cloverworks and directed by Tomohiko Ito and if memory serves me right it is inspired by a series of novels by the same name of The Millionaire Detective written by Yasutaka Tsutsui. So I gave you sort of what this series is about. At first, when you start watching uh, Millionaire Detective, it's a very fun show and I pointed that out in my first impressions video back in April that the series knows its subject matter. It knows that it is going to have fun by throwing these characters, this buddy cop dynamic that shouldn't work, but somehow these two guys make it work. You have Kambe who uh, has been raised in a privileged household, although there have been certain events and tragedies that unfolded in that in that character's backstory. And on the other opposite side, you have Kato, who is much more humble, uh, being a poor man's cop, basically. However, he was a stellar detective at one point, but due to an incident uh, in one of the cases where he had to shoot and kill uh, a person, it deeply affected him, and as a result, he had to resign and is also part of the modern crime prevention headquarters. Now, the two characters butt heads because of their different personalities and style. Kato is obviously much more traditional when it comes to police work, and Kambe is more flamboyant and exuberant in his, you know, police dealings. Now, the other thing to note here is that in my first impressions video, I mentioned how Kambe's personality was sort of like uh, the Playboy Bruce Wayne type persona, uh, but solving crimes in Japan. It's, it's in there, but there's more to it. I, I failed to recognize that the character is a little bit more than that. Yes, he does present that towards uh, the criminals and the rest of the uh, police force and even the audience, but there's a little bit more intelligence there and uh, it, a friend of mine reminded me that, hey, this character is very similar in style to, say, uh, Cumberbatch's uh, Sherlock Holmes uh, adaptation. So it's that type of character that does things in unorthodox ways where you're shocked, but it makes sense. And you root for him in his unconventional methods of solving crime. And the first couple of episodes, this is only 11 episodes, The I would say the first five are fairly standard. At, at the beginning, you get a solid introduction to the characters. You see the dynamic and how they're going to butt heads as they solve different crimes from uh, robbery to uh, different uh, political intrigue stuff. And as the, 
And as the series progresses, the case that they're involved in becomes much more complex as it relates to Kanbei's family, who's this wealthy, famous family in Japan that's developed, that they're, they're full of scientists and they've developed technology for the government and military and all that stuff. One of their items is a key part of the whole plot of the series. And it relates as well to Kanbei's past with his family. So he has a personal stake in all of this and it keeps evolving in a very cool badass way this is a very fun intriguing action-packed show the art by cloverworks is fantastic you know they've done stuff like promised neverland in the past so you're getting quality material the character designs are very nice to look at i remember kambe was trending on twitter when the series debuted it everybody was fascinated by him and it has that style and gusto the series knows how to pull off the heist elements and the detective work but also some comedic episodes i remember the one where they're helping this kid who lost their pet so you have kambe and uh, koto working together in a much simpler setting and not dealing with spies and political intrigue and shootouts and all that stuff so you get a healthy balance of the two obviously after episode five the drama and plot really kick in and you get a much better uh, story throughout and I think you will be satisfied it is fairly simple to execute there's a lot of plot twists that go around and an intriguing mystery but it's it doesn't confuse its audience it treats you with respect and it, it doesn't spoon feed you all the info so it keeps you guessing episode to episode as to how they're gonna unravel the mystery how they're gonna solve the crime and catch the bad guys obviously to note is the relationship between the two main characters and how they start bonding over time and even though Kambe, you know he doesn't necessarily agree with everything Kato is saying and vice versa, it's still really fun. Obviously, the other aspect is the James Bond type scenario with Kambe having the unlimited budget. It allows him to access his supercomputer. Think Alfred meets Jarvis from the uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe, stuff like that, where he's able to unleash uh, huge amounts of money and solve things that would otherwise uh, drag police work down by weeks or months, you know, getting clearance to do certain things and having access to equipment and uh, weapons, stuff like that. And that, uh, that sci-fi element really spices up the drama and makes you root for the characters and stay intrigued with the show as the plot moves forward. Like I mentioned earlier, the characters and art and background work and everything regarding to the visuals of the show is spot on, really badass and clean looking. I love the character designs. I'm a big fan of Cloverworks and I think they knocked it out of the park. Actually, kudos to uh, one of the background characters of the series. She's not often seen in the plot but uh, that is, and I'm reading the name here because I'm totally forgetting on her name, uh, Saeki Mahoto, the only woman on the task force. She provides mostly comedic relief, but she is hilarious. I love that character. And if there's ever a season two, because there is more material, this is based off a series of novels, I, I hope they get back together and they show all the cast again because I want to see more of her because she was really awesome and funny. Uh, but yeah, definitely if you like your political intrigues or your spy action dramas with a little comedic tone to it and if you want that whole um, super heroics but based off the real world with actual policemen uh, doing and solving international crimes and all that stuff, you're going to have a fun kick-ass time with Millionaire Detective Balance Unlimited. I happen to like it. What about you guys? What did you think of the series if you've watched it? If not, let me know what are some of your favorite politically inspired anime, and by that I mean the political drama, not the actual politics, uh, when it comes to anime and manga. Very interested in checking that out very interested in finding out. Guys, as always, thank you so much for liking, commenting, subscribing. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. I do content like this where I go over anime, manga, and even some comics here and there. So thank you once again, everybody. I have got to go. I will catch all of you on our next episode.